Trump says Republicans benefit as long as House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi stays in power. Watch him here. I hope she doesn't step down. I think that it would be a very, very sad day for Republicans if she steps down. I'd be very, very disappointed if she did. I'd like to keep her right where she is because our record is extraordinary against her. But we'll see what happens. There has been a lot of talk about her stepping down. We'll have to see what happens. In other words, he's no fool, right? This comes amid calls from some within her own party for her to step down, for her to make room for new leadership. The Democrats, they're certainly in disarray following a string of special election losses and, of course, Hillary Clinton's loss. And learning their anti-Trump message isn't enough. And you at home, um, well, you got mixed views on this. Some of you disagree with the president. Two-thirds of you say, get rid of her. She's, it's time for her to go. They need new leadership there, while 34% uh, of you do agree that she should stay put. American Majority CEO Ned Ryan is joining me now, along with syndicated radio host Chris Hahn. I'm sending it to the Democrat first here, Chris Hahn. You know, it's got to be frustrating for you guys. You, you lost the big election. You've lost the special elections. And I, I think you've come to realize that sort of this anti-Trump message, at least you personally, Chris Hahn, has not resonated. That is what Nancy Pelosi stands for. Nancy Pelosi embraces and represents these liberal West Coast values. You're shaking your head no, but she's not doing you any favors. Doesn't she need to help? Help make room for the new. You know, you sound a whole lot like Emperor Palpatine right before the Ewoks took down the deflector shield and the good guys destroyed the Death Star. So hold your horses. It's always darkest just before the dawn, my friend. And pendulums have a funny way of swinging back and forth. As for Leader Pelosi, look, she's been a good leader. She's been there a long time. I think the party needs to start thinking about secession planning there. I think that okay. that talks are, are going on right now, and I think you'll start seeing that. So, well, that's an important uh, uh, qualification to what you just said there. With I think that was a Star Wars analogy, right? That, yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah. a big Star Wars yes. girl, Definitely other than really liking the Princess Leia costume. So, full disclosure, <laughs> I don't always get those. Uh, <clears throat> I don't always get those analogies, but I had a feeling I knew where you were going. But the point is, is that there Nancy Pelosi, yeah. Ned Ryan, um, she really seems to represent what the party has become, and that's. And that's not good, frankly, for them, because I, I was just making the point to someone earlier. You know, I grew up in a, in a big Irish Catholic right. family, and my father, family of eight kids, you were a Democrat like you were Irish, like you were Catholic. This was part of your identity, and everybody right. was very working class, union members, et cetera. That's no longer and the Democrat Party. And that is no longer the no. party today. It is the party of uh, Hollywood, the party of Nancy Pelosi, the party of the elites that care more about transgender rights, 0.001% of the population than they do it's, about the rights of everyday Americans. It's because I wrote an op-ed on this a couple weeks ago and called them the Coastal Regional Party. Because you look at the map, you look at a third of the, the House Democrat caucus, they're from four states. California, New York, Illinois, Massachusetts. And so under Nancy Pelosi's leadership, I voted in your poll, by the way. I voted no. Thank I want you. Nancy to stick around. Uh, and the reason is, wow. since 2010, no, since 2010, uh, Democrats have lost almost 1,100 seats at the state and federal level. Republicans now have 33 governorships, the most that any party has ever had in our history. And you look at what the, the Democrats are doing post-2016, you thought they would have learned their lessons and say, hey, you know what, we kind of abandoned the working class and they abandoned us, we should go back to them. No, they've gone even further left. And I think that the problem right now with some of their messaging is, is basically this, and I sum it up and it's very, very basic. We are going to resist a legitimate government and a duly elected president without a shred of evidence and without one positive policy point. Come join us. Yeah. And you know what? That doesn't well, resonate look, with independent voters you know, and moderate voters no, and the working yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. They've got to figure just, out you know, They need to put food on the table, and they want their they kids to have a checks. better yeah. shot. Pay mortgage. Uh, Chris, he's given, so, so, he's given the left some good advice here. Can't you well, agree with Ned, that? Look, for, well, Ned, first, Come on, Chris, just agree with me. It's the, just once. It's, the, it's, the, it's the Democratic Party, Ned, not the Democrat Party. I know you don't like science, but come on, grammar. We should all agree on I grammar. I would say Democrats because right? it bugs you guys. So, so. So, so, so here's the thing. Here's where I do agree, Ned. 
The party needs to connect what's going on in Washington, what's going on locally. And if the party fails to do that, they will continue to lose elections, like That's the right. one they lost in Georgia, right? Mm -hmm. You got to say why these policies that are happening in Washington that we disagree with are affecting you locally, and they haven't mm -hmm. been able to do that. I think the party's main problem is that they're too Washington-centric with their consultant class, and there's not as many local consultants out there actually in the weeds, in the districts, actually working these races. Chris, you're going to start to see a shift away from that. There's all sorts of conversations going on right oh, now. I don't know. I think that's been realized, and I think the best thing that could have happened to the Democratic Party was for them to lose the Georgia but six. But Chris, I think you guys have a real six problem. Races run just like every other race. No, but I think you've got a real problem. I think your donor base and your your, your grassroots, the far left, are literally eating the Democrat Party from within, and they're forcing the party Democratic. to the left. And they're, with the money and the grassroots, they're forcing candidates to win their primary. That are forcing the party left. And until the donor class and the grassroots understand that their candidates are not a winning proposition yeah. in general elections, you guys are still going to have problems. Final well, as for the party forcing its candidates left, I mean, I said the same thing about the Tea Party, and I was dead wrong. I think you're wrong here right now, too. No, but, but, fact, but John more, more of the John Ossoff was not in line with the Tea Party than with the left. Not an extreme, yeah, I get 10 but Ned, John Ossoff was not an extreme left candidate. He was a pretty much a, a centrist candidate. Who didn't and frankly, district. he just lost because Listen, he had no message, it, it, and that's the problem. Need, you need the message, and, and you need the working class on your side, for sure. Thanks so much, guys.